Hello everyone, welcome, welcome back to my channel. My name is Abigail and thank you so much for clicking on my video. This is my fall slash winter knitting plans. And I know it's kind of late seeing that it is the 11th of October, but I mean, at least you'll get one. I almost didn't film one because I was thinking it was going to be too late to make one. But I was thinking like if I like kind of include my winter plans in it too, then I think it'll be fine. So this is kind of like, I have way too, too much stuff on this list. But so like I will probably be knitting on these things until the end of winter. So I think that's more so the direction I'm going to go with this video. And today I'm wearing my glasses in case you like what's off about this video. Um, my contacts are taking too long to come in and I don't want to waste them on days where I am at home. So it is a glasses day for me, but I also want to get more into wearing my glasses because I have an eye doctor appointment this month and I want to buy some new glasses. So I'm just kind of like getting myself used to wearing them. And if you hear any background noise, it is because I'm not using a microphone and it just kind of like picks up on like everything. But I hope that's fine with you. It doesn't really bother me and I hope it doesn't bother you. But I do try to cut it down as much as possible. Okay, now before I get into the actual list of plants I have, I want to talk about what I'm wearing. Today I am wearing my Stockholm sweater v-neck. I always love these kind of videos because I have the option of wearing something that's not a finished object because because I feel like in my podcast, I, I mean not, I don't have to, but I love wearing my finished objects in my podcast and showing them off to you, but what y'all might not know is I wear my knits like every single day almost. Every time I leave the house, I'm always in a knit. So today I'm wearing my most worn knit ever. Like I, I definitely think this is my most worn knit. This is my Stockholm v-neck in drop sleeve in the color goldenrod. This was like my fourth or fifth sweater and I knitted it last August, I believe. I finished it last August or July, I don't know, but it's beautiful, it's a stunner. I wear it with my Old Navy halter neck. I don't know, I love them. I have three of them and I love them. And I think she looks good. So I have two of them and I actually have this pattern on the list for today. Ask anyone in my personal life and they'll tell you I wear this guy all the time. So I figured it is very fitting to give it more attention on my channel. Okay, with all that out of the way, I'm going to go ahead and get into the list. This, oh my goodness, I'm going to go ahead and get into this list. So I have it sectioned off kind of like, so I'm going to start with yarn I have in stash that I have plans for. And then I'm going to do yarn I have partly in stash and I just need to buy a second strand or whatever. And then I'm gonna go into like my dreams of to cast on and what's on my, what's the word like my cue for yarn buying. Okay, I'm going to begin with the Levitate Wrap by My Favorite Things Knitwear. And if you noticed, I'm like kind of sitting off to the side so I have room for pictures because I love pictures in videos. So I will supply them for you. So I actually like don't have the yarn ready to show you so I'm gonna have to like dig through my stash bag here but let me find the levitate wrap yarn it's this one and this one so I'm gonna pair these two yarns together for the levitate wrap and this is drops kid silk mohair in the color cherry sorbet and this is drops lima in the color blush I think blush mix and I'm going to make these for the Levitate Wrap and I think it's going to look absolutely gorgeous. So the Levitate Wrap is a lace plus DK weight pattern. I, I was going to go a different route and do like a worsted weight yarn because the lace plus DK on Ravelry says it makes Erin for a 15 stitch gauge. But then I ended up having this in stash and they I didn't buy these to go together, but I kind of just like 
looked at them together and I was like, that would actually be really beautiful. So I believe my favorite things knitwear uses Issager for this pattern. Issager Eco Soft and Issager Trio One. But I'm going to do the drop sleema and drop some mohair. The Levitate wrap is a top down wrap cardigan. I've never done anything like this before and I think it's going to be amazing. And every time I have seen someone knit it, they say it's like their favorite thing they've ever knitted. Um, like I think the Wooly Worker really likes hers and Strange Things by Mel, I think she really likes hers too. So I just seen like people like rave about this pattern and I, I'm so excited to have it in my wardrobe. I don't know when I'm gonna cast it on, but the yarn is in stash and ready to go. If you are a long time viewer of my channel, I actually bought this drop slima to pair with another drop slima in the color like off-white or something for the Marseille. So like this yarn has been in my stash for a while, for like over a year. And I just, for some reason, I just wasn't feeling the Marseille with this yarn. I do still want to knit the Marseille, but I'm just like, I think this is going to be a way nicer yarn combo than what I had in mind for the Marseille. So yeah, that's the Levitate Wrap by My Favorite Things Knitwear. Okay, moving on to the next thing I have, and now we're kind of getting into acquisition. So this is a new yarn that I've acquired since my last video. So I took a trip to Halifax, me and my family did. I kind of have to preface this, so sorry for the, the long intro to this section. But me and my family took a trip to Halifax on September 18th, because that was the day after my birthday, and we we had to go there for some like boring stuff like i had to get a passport and all that um but while we were there in halifax of course we had to stop by fia fia and here's some pictures of it oh, beautiful beautiful an amazing trip and um juliana was amazing and oh, it was such a beautiful yarn shop so of course i had to like spend a ton of money there because how could you not and i got some pure again for the Ava cardigan. So I got this color. Oh, beautiful, beautiful. This is color 5575 and this will be the Ava cardigan. And I am so excited for this. The Ava cardigan is Petite Knit's newest cardigan she has out and I, I don't normally like fall in love with cardigans, but this guy, like something about it, I fell in love with. And it's interesting to me because the champagne cardigan I have knit before, and that is a more like objectively like beautiful cardigan. I don't know, like the double knitting button band and just something about it is probably objectively like technically better than the Ava cardigan, but I love the Ava cardigan. The um, bottom band on this one, I actually like more than a double knitting bottom band because it's just so clean. So because I wanted to keep up with that clean look Petite Knit has, like the crisp defined stitches, I didn't really want to chance buying a different yarn than what the pattern calls for, so I decided to just stick with the pure again. I I think this is a slightly different color than she uses, but like I think she uses one of the new ones. I think it's called like Night Sky or something. She uses 5591 and I have 5575, so slightly different, but I love this one and I think it will be perfect. So I bought 13 balls, so that gives me the ability to do sizes extra small to 2x so i can do whichever one of those sizes i'm probably gonna do like medium or small and i would take a gauge swatch to see if i hit gauge but this will be the next pattern i cast on so once i finish some stuff on my needles i will be casting on this guy next and i am super excited for it and i'm going to find the cutest buttons on etsy and it's going to be beautiful i think i'm thinking like a um 
resin button like maybe something from pigeon wishes if you have heard of them i've seen their etsy shop and i know a lot of people use their buttons for their for their knitwear and they have very beautiful buttons so maybe something from there i'm excited to do this construction again it's the same construction as the poppy tea i think patina has been like really enjoying this construction apparently because it's been in a lot of her patterns so it's like the saddle shoulder thing it's not really like a saddle shoulder because you don't have to do all those like picking up stitches that you normally have to do with the saddle shoulder it's more like a raglan mixed with the drop shoulder so you start off like as a drop shoulder and then you kind of like join in the well for like a sweater you would like join in the round and do a raglan but this is a cardigan i think it's called continuous sleeve I think that's what it's called. I'm super, super excited for this guy and I cannot wait to cast her on. The next thing I have in my stash is, oh, by the way, I keep prefacing these things, but this stuff is not set in stone. <laughs> there is a high, high chance you will see me do none of these patterns. Well, I know I'm gonna do the Ava and the Levitate, but like, this is just kind of like the first pattern. For some of these, like, it's just the first pattern that pops into mind and I'm not like set on it and if a new pattern comes out that uses the same gauge then that's what I'll do if I like it better so this is just kind of like not set in stone so I might not do all of these but I think if you've been watching my channel you kind of understand that we'll see how many of these I actually get to hi I'm back okay I had to leave for about an hour or so and while I was gone, I decided to eat some food. I'm back. I believe I was talking about the sweater number 25, but I believe I'm just going to like start over on that. So it might just be like a weird cut. We're going to try to like get back in the groove of things. So for the sweater number 25, which was my next plans, I'm going to be using this Drops Air. And I think the camera's okay. Do I need to make this closer? Okay. I think that's better. I don't want it to be too far away because then the audio is kind of quiet. Okay, so yeah, I'm gonna use, for the sweater number 25, I'm gonna use this Drops Air and Drops Mohair. This is the color 37 and this is 21. So 37 and 21, and I'm gonna pair these two together. This is not an acquisition. This was in my last couple. I, I think I, I have, this was in a video before, and I had no idea what I was gonna do with it, but I believe this sweater number 25 is going to be pretty good for it because it calls for a 15 stitch gauge in light, which is light fingering plus two strings of mohair. So I believe this would be like pretty good to kind of get that gauge. Um, I think the drops air is a 17 stitch gauge. So it uses five millimeter needles for 17 stitch gauge for the drops air. And then adding the mohair will kind of like make that a bit thicker. And I think that'll be a pretty nice sweater. And the reason I have decided to use this pattern is because I really, really think this color looks good on me. This like blue color and having the roll turtleneck thingy, like having that really close to my face will just look really good on me. I think it'll just be the coziest winter sweater. So I get distracted because our road has construction and you can like, I, I can at least hear it really bad right now. So if you can hear that, please excuse that, but it just distracts me. Um, okay, and the other reason I actually wanted this to be a turtleneck besides just I think it will look good on me is this yarn is really soft. These two yarns are like super soft and I think just that will be so cozy. So. That's sweater number 25. It's a top down drop shoulder sweater and it's knit with six millimeter needles and I think it's gonna look really good. My favorite thing to knit wear uses Alpaca 2 from Issinger and two strands of their mohair, I think. Anyways, I think this will be perfect. And I've seen other people knit this pattern and I, I think it looks really nice. So yeah, that's gonna be this beautiful drops air. I'm going to talk about the next pattern on this list. And I think you've heard me talk about this before if you've watched my other videos, but I'm going to reiterate it on here. 
I'm going to be using this Titus yarn, this beautiful Titus navy blue yarn for the Maryland turtleneck by Fobbled Knitwear. So the reason I specifically picked this pattern is because this Titus yarn, I have two of these and they are each 350 yards. That is not a lot of yards. So one thing about this pattern is the extra small uses 656 yards. So I have 700 yards in total. So I should be able to get this pattern out of this because I did not realize how little yardage this had when I bought it because I can easily get like a, easily, not really easily. I'm pretty confident in getting a fingering held single sweater out of like 800 to 900 yards, but this is cutting it a bit close. So this is fingering yarn, but it's looking a bit more like sport. And I think, so the Maryland turtleneck uses four millimeter. So that's a bit thicker than what the yarn recommends. And I think that'll make the yardage go a long way, if that makes sense. So we're gonna see how that goes. It says it calls for 656 yards with the extra small. And I will probably do that so that I can like actually, this is just cutting it close. So, but I think that'll be fine because I have 700 yards in total. So yeah. And I think the loose gauge will be really nice for this yarn. And also I think it looks really good with my face. So I'm loving this navy blue and I need, I, I just need like a fitted turtleneck. This looks, the construction of this looks like it's a top-down set-in-sleeve kind of construction or continuous method and I am super excited for it. I hope it's top-down. If it's not, that's gonna scare me. Okay, yes, it's top, it's a top-down continuous sleeve method construction and I think it's going to be really nice in this Titus yarn. I actually bought this at the yarn shop that I work at and I'm super excited to try it. And I'm actually kind of sad because if I really like this yarn, it, I couldn't get it again because this Titus, this Ballroom U brand is actually um, discontinued. Like their company is not making yarn anymore, I think, but it feels really nice. It's a blend of 50% Winsleydale long wool and 20% blue face Leicester for the wool and then the rest so that's 70% British wool and then 30% UK alpaca so I think it's a beautiful blend of yarn and I'm kind of sad I wouldn't be able to get it again that is this Titus yarn and it's gonna kind of make the yarn chicken game a little bit more stressful because I can't get it again in the yarn shop that was the two last navy blues at the yarn shop okay the next thing i have on this list is the stockholm sweater v-neck like i mentioned at the beginning of the video i had this on this list and i'm excited to show you what yarn i'm using for it i've never used this yarn before or like what i mean is i've never used this like color before i'm going to be knitting the stockholm sweater v-neck in this cascade 220 green paired with this Drops Kids Silk Mohair. And this is actually acquisition. I bought this recently and it was kind of like my birthday buy from Three Bags Full, which is where I work. Any excuse I have to buy yarn is I'll take it. So I got this and I'm going to, I'm really excited to see how this morals together. I love a good mohair and different color wool marl. I think it's absolutely beautiful. And the reason I've decided to do the Stockholm sweater v-neck is because none other than Typical Bliss, AKA Tiffany Lou, is knitting up this pattern in green. And I just, I needed one, I needed one so badly. So this is actually going to be a very, very soon cast on because I need to see how these colors morrow. And I love, 
I love this shirt so much the one I'm wearing that I just need another one even though I have this one this is another one I have so I have two of this v-neck pattern I have one of the round neck and then I have two Stockholm sweater v-necks and soon I will have three and I've never done the v-neck in the mo with the fingering plus mohair before I think it's gonna be beautiful and I would have already swatched but I did not want to wind up this hank yet so once I feel like doing that I'm gonna swatch I actually probably won't swatch because you just kind of like cast on for the back and then that can be my swatch but oh, i cannot wait to show you how these model together i think it's gonna be beautiful this mohair is the color apple green and this one is the color 9430 and it's the cascade 220 fingering I, i'm like so excited for that i cannot wait to cast that guy on i'm so ready this is another petite knit i'm going to be making the caramel sweater it's a picture and I am going to be knitting this up in my Cinderella mohair. So I'm on to the section of this pattern list where I don't have half of the yarn. So I don't have the main strand for this, but I'm going to be holding it with Knitting for Olive Soft Peach. Knitting for Olive Merino in the color Soft Peach. I'm really sorry. I bet you can hear that. My our road is like insane right now. It's so bad. They're doing something with the sidewalks and it is so loud. So I hope you don't mind, but I really want to film this video. So yes, I'll be holding this with the soft peach knitting fall merino. I just have not bought it yet, but I think I'm so happy to show this to you because Last video, you just saw it on, like you just saw the picture of it, and I know I have it, and it's so beautiful, and I love it so much. So this is from the Sorella Eras Tour collection, and this is the color Lover, and it's the mohair. So I got two because ugh, it's so sad. Like I really needed three, but like I didn't need enough of the three to make it like. I don't know, it just would have put it like at a really expensive purchase and um, I was like kind of scared of customs too and I just, it was kind of sad. But the minimum yardage this calls for is 1,159 yards. I have, I think I have like 900, I have 918 yards. Math, I'm trying to times that by two. So I have 918 yards and the pattern calls for, for the extra small, 1,159 yards. And I'm going to do everything I can to make sure I have enough yarn. So I'm going to size up to 4.5 millimeter. This calls for 4 millimeter. And with the turtleneck, I'm just going to make the part that goes out with the mohair. And the inside part is going to be two strands of the fingering. And I might even do like a more like a mock neck rather than the huge turtleneck for ultimate yarn saving or whatever you know what I mean like to to optimize the yardage and make sure I have enough but I'm super excited and I cannot wait to purchase it but my next pattern that I have on the list is also yarn I need from Knitting for Olive so whenever I feel like spending that money I will buy like both of them together. So anyways, by the way, the camo sweater is a top down rag on turtleneck sweater and I have knit her before and I wore it all the time last year and it is a really great pattern. So yeah, that's this hair. Okay, yes, the next sweater I have on this list is actually a cardigan and it is the Mauricia cardigan. So I'm going to be knitting this up in this yarn, which is also an acquisition, it is Cascade Heritage, and I'm going to buy a mohair from Knitting for Olive to go with it. So I don't remember what color it was, but I'll put it here, and I'm gonna buy that color. So I'm gonna put, I'm gonna buy those together, this mohair and the other merino. I'm gonna purchase that together, so, Whenever like I feel like spending that money, I will do that. But I have so much things already to knit up that 
you know, it's, I, I'm, it might be more like towards the end of November that I buy that. But yeah, I'm so excited to have this and I'm so excited to have more cardigans too because I don't, I really needed one cardigan and I, it was the champagne cardigan and I gave that to my mom because I didn't like it. Because not pattern issues, it was like how I needed up issues. It was too dense of a fabric. But I have been eyeing the Mercy cardigan cardigan since it came out and I especially love Alexander's garden version of it so beautiful so beautiful and I I love it because it's like faux cables and it's not just knit and pearl and knit and pearl and it has a beautiful silhouette so I really so I have the two v-neck cardigans the levitate and the ava cardigan and I think I'm gonna need like a round neck cardigan. I think this will be perfect. So I got three of these Cascade Heritage and I actually bought this at Wall Follette, which is a yarn shop kind of near where I live. And I just wanted to check it out. And when you check out a yarn shop nearby, of course you wanna support them. And this was actually 30% off. And I believe this is the color Pumpkin Spice Latte. It's color number five seven six one so yeah it is super beautiful and it's literally the exact same color as my beauty school top up there you see this one it's the exact same color which i did not notice whenever i bought it um but yeah i have three of these which will be enough and it is 100 grams and it's just a sock yarn so merino nylon blend i believe yeah 75 merino 25 nylon and it's like the softest sock yarn i've ever felt like this is a really soft sock yarn so and and she had a um there she had a sample knit up in it like a shirt and it was like color work and it was beautiful and i felt it and it like blocks out really nice so if you have the chance to buy this i believe it's on wool warehouse too you should pick it up because it's really nice so yeah that's gonna be the marissa cardigan and i'm i'm so excited for all these cardigans that i have on this list and buying buttons is gonna be so fun this pattern that i'm going to talk about i bought yarn for it yesterday so it's on the way and that is sweater number 24 right here so this is a boucle pattern obviously and i don't even know if it's drop shoulder or raglan you can't actually tell because of the yarn but i'm going to be knitting up this pattern in drops alpaca boucle and drops flora so this is an air and weight pattern and i with the 15 stitch gauge and i figured the alpaca boucle on its own would be too gapey of a fabric because it's a dk it will warehouse says it's a dk so and i didn't want a mohair to go with it so i decided to buy the drops flora which is a really thin fingering weight and it was also on sale um and i think that would just look really nice so yeah if you didn't know the alpaca party sale is going on so that's literally the only reason i bought this yarn right now i had previously put the alpaca boucle in my cart to make this pattern but it was kind of expensive and i was like i bet they'll go on sale soon so just next time they go on sale i'm i'll buy it so then they went on sale and i really wanted to buy it so i did and i actually put in a sweater quantity like a christmas sweater quantity like a red drops lima in my cart and i didn't even like think about what pattern i'd want to do with it and i took it out of my cart because i was like no we have too much yarn and i can buy that later whenever i actually have a pattern in mind so because of how much yarn i have that's kind of like a rule i want to have is have a pattern in mind when i buy yarn so yeah, I only bought one sweater quantity. <laughs> and it was really inexpensive. I think it was like no more than $50. I think it was like closer to 100 when it wasn't on sale. So I'm very, very happy I waited. And I cannot wait to look like a teddy bear this winter slash fall. I'm so excited for this. I think it's going to be so cute. And I think when I wear it and I tell people I made it, 
they're going to be surprised because the boucle you can see zero stitched definition like it does not it's probably going to be really hard to knit with because you just cannot see stitches i'm super excited for this i don't know how i'm going to take a gauge swatch but we'll see so yeah that is sort of number 24 by my favorite things knitwear okay so now i'm going to actually get into the patterns that i don't have the yarn for is the porcelain sweater by i think it's by Knit. if that's wrong i'll put it on screen but yeah this has been a sweater i've been eyeing i feel like since it came out i've been eyeing this guy for a long time and i have actually finally tried color work in some socks so i think i can tackle an all i think it's not really an all over color work sweater but a big color work sweater i think i can tackle it now because this is just the most gorgeous sweater i've ever seen like i don't know i think this is like my favorite color work sweater ever and it's really popular right now and i cannot wait to knit it the yarn it calls for is tin silk mohair and tin pure gant i would really love to use that combination and i i cannot wait to knit this guy up it's a drop shoulder color work and it's supposed to look like porcelain so i'm going to have to use this exact color combo because i think I've seen it with other co color combos and I think they're beautiful, but for the vibe that this sweater gives off, I need, I personally need this color combo with the white and the blue. I just, I need that in my life. And it's a 21 stitch gauge, so like DK, you could use DK, but I need the fluff to cover up the mistakes I inevitably make with my first color work sweater. Because while my socks turned out good it was kind of like they fit but there were some mistakes in them and they're kind of ripply and i'll show them to you in my next podcast i think i'm gonna have to like really be careful with this because if i'm gonna spend the money on the tin silk mohair and the tin pure gant then it needs to be the perfect sweater perfect tension everything and i'm kind of scared of doing the color work flat i've never purled with color work before so we'll see how that goes so the next pattern on this list is the marseille sweater by petite knit and like i said i have bought the yarn for this last year but i never ended up knitting it up obviously because that yarn is going to be the levitate wrap but i think i want to use simply wool worsted for this pattern and go for like a neutral vibe altogether because i love typical blisses marseille and i think i just want to recreate that completely so yeah this is just a simple drop shoulder with some stripes and i think she looks beautiful and super like it's gonna be a good wardrobe staple to have and it's just a dk wave pattern like you you know you probably know what the marseille is by now it's pretty popular and i think this simply will wear shit is going to be really nice from nitpicks it's from nitpicks by the way it's going to be really nice knit up into this sweater. Okay, the next sweater I have on this list is another cardigan. And it is the November jacket by Petite Knit. So I think this year I need to try something like this. This is an all over brioche cardigan. And I think I need one. And I think I also want to use Simply Woolworths for this pattern. And I think it's going to be like the most complicated thing I tackled this year. And I don't know when I'll end up buying the yarn for this, but whenever I just have the urge to have something like super complicated and huge on my needles, I think I'll buy this, but it's a top down, drop shoulder, all over brioche pattern, and it's Erin weight yarn, and it uses three and a half millimeter needles, which you're not gonna catch me doing that. That is way too tight for Erin weight. So I think I'll probably end up going up a needle size and doing four and a half millimeter because that is way too tight. But I love the way Petite Knit looks in this jacket and I love it so much. It has pockets too and I think that's just really cute. So this might not get done this year actually, maybe early next year. I don't know. I have some like kind of more out of the comfort zone knits on this list because like like i have the levitate wrap and then i have the mercy cardigan 
And then this. Whenever I get the urge to have these complicated knits, that's when I'm gonna cast them on. Like, I don't know. I can get kind of like um, burnt out with the texture knits. Like, I've only done like two. The Moby and the Ingrid, I don't think I... I've only done two, so. I, I just need the stock in it, so we'll see how many of these I actually end up doing. They might get moved over to next winter. But this is the Loom Sweater by Sari Norlin, and I just think this is really pretty. And it uses Cascade 220, like the worsted version, and I just think I need one. I think it's really pretty. Alexander Scar just started one, and it made me really want to get the yarn for it, but... I don't know when. It's a top-down circular yoke colorwork sweater on five millimeter needles with an 18 stitch gauge. And I don't know. This, you know what though, like I might actually do this one before the porcelain because it seems like, it just seems a bit easier because you don't have to do any colorwork flat and it's a bigger gauge and the yarn is cheaper, so. That's another thing. But yeah, I'm really excited for this sweater and can't wait to buy the yarn for it. And I just don't know when because whenever I'm buying yarn, my instinct is just to buy a solid color. I never really think about other options. I just end up putting a sweater quantity of a solid color. So we'll see when I actually buy the yarn for this. So the last sweater I have on this list is sweater number 20 by My Favorite Things Knitwear. And I put this on the list last minute. I put it on it like three seconds before I started to film because I, you know, I want a Christmas sweater this year. I need a Christmas sweater. And I think this in a red color will be perfect. I feel like I've stolen this idea from someone, but I cannot remember who, but I don't think I came up with this on my own. But anyways, I need a red sweater number 20, I'm, and it's one of my favorite things, knitwear. I think a red all over cable knit sweater will be like absolutely perfect for the holidays. And I'm thinking like Drops Alaska or Holstgarn or something like that like will be beautiful in this. And just something to like, I don't know, woolly. I need woolly for this because obviously like Christmas is in winter and I think having a warm wooly sweater for this will be perfect and I just love this chunky V and I cannot wait to knit this up. This has been on one of these lists before and I've never knit it obviously. I think this is going to be my Christmas sweater. I, there's, a there's a couple other options I have in my head like for instance like the Dorney from Crayabea would be like an easier one because it's raglan and then I did have sweater number 14 round neck for my Christmas sweater originally, but I think cables are kind of more Christmassy. So I think I'm gonna go with this. And it is Erin plus light fingering for a 21 stitch gauge in the cable pattern. So I don't know. I'm not good with like gauge with cables. So I think I'll just end up getting like an Erin weight yarn or if I do the whole scarn, I might have to hold that triple, but it uses five and a half millimeter needles and it is beautiful and i cannot wait to own one or some or if like another like cable pattern comes out like i just need a red christmas cabled sweater so this is just kind of like the placeholder if another one comes out that is sweater number 20 but my favorite things nowhere so the next thing i have on this list it is my only accessory i have more accessories just in my mind that i wanted it but i just this video was going to be too long and You'll just have to come along with me during the winter and during the fall and winter season to see what I actually knit up. This is the Autumn Tail Shawl by Ozetta. And I like fell in love with this. Like when it came out, like, oh, it's so beautiful. And last year I knit the Sophie Shawl by Petite Knit and I found it a little bit too small. I needed it bigger and wider. And I was going to just modify it this year to make one, but then this came out and it's literally basically like the Sophie Shaw, but bigger and wider. So, and also it's going to knit up quicker because it's worsted on six and a half millimeter needles. I mean, sorry, four and a half millimeter needles. Wait, no, I think it's about the same. I think it's the same gauge as the Sophie Shaw, 
so it's going to actually probably take a lot longer. But she uses Putalopi unspun Icelandic yarn, and I know Briggs and Lil has an unspun yarn. It's like Briggs and Lil roving, and the yarn shop I work at carries it. So whenever I get the urge to cast this on, I'll use that and I'll pair it with a stabilizing strand because working with it on its own sounds like a nightmare. I love the natural color she uses and the Briggs and Little Roving has some natural colors too. So I just want like a natural sheepy color for this. And I think it'll be really, really nice. And I'm currently knitting up a sweater by Ozetta and I really like that pattern. I'm doing the earth pullover and I want to buy more of Ozetta's patterns because I'm really enjoying the one I'm working on right now. Those are all my fall and winter knitting plans and I am excited to see which ones I knit and which ones I don't and yeah, that, that is all I have. It was a long list. I have 15 patterns and if you take into account like how many months fall and winter is, that's like a lot of patterns. So I definitely won't be getting to all of these. Some will be pushed into next year or some I might never knit. I don't know. And I'm really excited to also see um, like new patterns that come out and petite knit and my favorite things knitwear. I'm excited to see what, what new patterns they come out with because I, I love, I love their patterns. So if you made it this far in the video, please, if you would like this video, subscribe if you want to and leave a comment telling me some of your fall slash winter knitting plans. I also want to draw inspiration from all of you and see what you're knitting. So leave in the comments that and thank you so much for watching and I will see you in my next video.